Hi everyone, it's TTL back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look, stroke having a chat about, stroke looking at the performance nature of HDR in some of the newest games. So AMD got in contact with me recently and asked me if I would like a play. Now being the inquisitive person that I am, I obviously said yes because it's new tech and it would be really nice to get my hands on it. So it's, it's in conjunction with FreeSync 2. So that's um, you know the new kind of thing that AMD are trying to push through at the moment in with syncing the graphics card frames up with the, uh, the frames on the monitors, you get less tear in, although you can get a bit of stuttering depending on the game that you're playing. Um, but the way that AMD, there's a video online actually you can go and have a look at, and they're, rather than seeking more and more and more high speed frames, essentially what they've started to look at more is uh, going down the quality route again. So rather than it just being literally about hundreds of frames per second, you actually then kind of look more in, can we make things look better? Which obviously if you can make games look better, if you're an enthusiast, then that will kind of, it fits kind of right in with this really, doesn't it? So with HDR, high dynamic range, it's about making the, the contrast uh, a lot broader and the colours a lot more saturated and there being a lot more brightness as well, but not necessarily just turning the brightness up. It's about very specific parts. Now, one of the things you do need to keep an eye on is there are a few different types of HDR, or literally a few different kind of categories of HDR depending on what the monitor can actually support. The XG49VQ that's behind me that I got sent um, is essentially a 4K wide monitor but it's only 1080 tall. So it is 3840 pixels but it's only 10, uh, 1080 pixels tall and it's essentially the same as two 27 inch 1920 by 1080 um, monitors kind of stitched together and that's a very broad way of putting it but it's a very wide 49 inch wide um, uh, screen. Now the idea with it being so wide is essentially rather than having two monitors on your desk you can just have one monitor on your desk and it does have things where you can uh, set up the way the pages work and there's some hotkeys and stuff as well so you don't just have to have like two programs for example open you can have you know like a big one to one side and you can set the rest of the screen up and you can open and move things in it you can obviously disable those as well but this is the hot keys that you can play around with it but anyway it's a VA panel it's 144 hertz now they do advertise it as being four millisecond gray to gray but that's the same as some of the other manufacturers when they say there's a uh, one millisecond because that's one millisecond color to color and not gray to gray but the, the whole millisecond side of things with screens is a bit of a minefield. But anyway, so I got that to have a play with. Now we tried Far Cry 5, we tried Assassin's Creed uh, Origins, uh, and we also did Forza Horizon, plus the new that you can see running in the background, AMD FreeSync 2 HDR benchmark. Now with the benchmark it will loop and it is just looping in the background. Uh, but you can turn FreeSync off and there's a couple of different types of HDR that you can turn on as well. Now, so uh, my point was with the different types of HDR, the Asus monitor is HDR 400. Um, but if you go up to HDR 600, and I don't know why the screen keeps dimming. I think it's because of the thing in the background. Uh, um, if you go up to 600 and 1000, essentially what you need is uh, local dimming areas. And that is something that this screen specifically doesn't support. Um, now I haven't seen local dimming, so I can't really comment on it. Uh, but all I know is this is kind of, it's like an entry level HDR screen. Now there aren't a great deal of six or especially not 1000 HDR screens at the moment. But like I said, it is still a relatively new technology. So what's going to happen is you are going to see things kind of broaden and uh, more products get launched. Uh, but also we kind of need the developers to kind of kick in as well. And that's something I did want to talk about today. Um, now the uh, AMD benchmark is lovely, it looks great. You can see a lot, you can see a fair amount of um, differences between the pictures, especially when you, it scrolls around and you can see the AMD logo with the HDR on. There is a lot more definition 
um, in it. And you can, you do get to see uh, a lot more clarity. There's a lot more going on with the HDR on. But, like I said, it's, it's developer specific. So one of the things I do want to say is uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the implementation of HDR in that game is probably the best yet. It's unbelievable. There's loads more options. It's not just an on and off. You can go in there and set up the knit settings. You can go in there and there's loads of options in there that you can just go in and tweak and you'll probably end up having an absolute field day playing around with that. And it's going to end up being a lot like uh, a lot of the, um, you know, like when you get a new PC and you love tweaking it and playing with it and setting it up. I think that's going to be uh, what's going to evolve with the, all of these HDR settings. One of the things I will say as well is it is going to be kind of uh, different between each of the games because it can look really nice like it does in Assassin's Creed uh, Origins. I would say though that one of the things that they said that it was meant to do was so that you could, if you were inside and you could see details inside, you could still see details outside. Now something with uh, Assassin's Creed is I will definitely say that you don't really get to see any extra uh, details outside when you're inside. Uh, if anything, there's a bit less at the moment. It does seem very kind of like sun bleached at this present moment in time. Then when you get outside and it's almost like that your eyes take that little bit of time to adjust, it, it, you then get all that extra crack in detail. Um, but it's not your eyes, it's literally just part of the game at the moment. But uh, that's just one of the very, very minor points that I wanted to point out with that. Uh, Far Cry, it looked lovely, it looked great, it, it was a very simple on-off kind of situation that you could turn on with it, but it did look cracking. The one that, and it's one of the reasons why I did want to bring it up, it was Forza was actually a bit of a letdown, to the point that Forza is one of the titles that you would want to disable HDR on. So the colours actually ended up being the total opposite of the way you would expect them. That when the HDR was off was how you would have expected it to have looked when it was on in comparison. So uh, the colours just seemed a lot more washed out. But in the, the B-roll, one of the things I want to draw your attention to is the Ferrari F40. Lovely red Ferrari, looks cracking, Do you know, what I mean? it looks really, really nice. But then when you turn the HDR on, all of that colour kind of disappears and it just gets bleached away and the, re the poppiness of the red is just, it, it, it's, it's gone. It's like but virgin on like brown. It's like the colour palette is can completely changed. Now this will probably be something that can get fixed in an update to the game, like a patch, and it probably will evolve a little bit more anyway. But this is why I said it's not just something that you turn on for everything. Now there is a specific game support list with HDR any on anyway but this is on there and it just didn't look that brilliant now so there are um, uh, lots of caveats and things that you can tweak and play around with uh, but th the general consensus is does it really make any difference and I would say yes uh, with um, Assassin's Creed for example the amount of options that you actually get to go in and play with there is unbelievable and it does make it uh, it can make it a complicated thing for a newcomer but if you're the type of person that likes to tweak and play around with things and you know by the time you set your monitor up and then you've calibrated it and then you've gone in and set up all the games the w once you get it to a point that you like the difference between then the standard game is just unbelievable it does enable just another layer of depth and immersion to it and it you can understand when, when you get to see it in the flesh you do get to uh, see what they mean about like the contrast and it's not just turning blacks up and you know whites up it the, just the range across the whole color spectrum does get you do just get another layer of detail now when i film the footage i've obviously filmed at the screen which some of you might not particularly like but the way to do that is I'm trying to show you what the monitor was showing me. So by doing that, essentially what I've done is I've had to set the camera up manually so it's not constantly adapting. Uh, and I've done the best I can to try and uh, show you how it looked this end. Um, so I, I would like some feedback on that as well because this is a kind of a relatively new thing for me to be trying to play around with and show you guys as well. 
Now, the Acer screen that I've got behind me does come in at uh, £1,079, which is a lot of money. But like I said, when you consider the fact that it is kind of a 49 inch wide, and it is kind of like two screens, you're just gonna have to decide whether that's the kind of way that you want to go with it. One of the things I will say though, is with such a wide panel, you can end up getting a little bit of motion sickness because of everything going on at the edge of the panels. Um, Assassin's Creed specifically, after a while of playing that, it, you know, you, you can get a little bit kind of tummy-fied with it. Um, it's not as extreme as when you're playing VR, but it's the same kind of thing. And it's something to do with the blurs on the edges. Again, this might be something that they'll be able to fix with patches, but obviously with a 49 inch widescreen, it's a relatively new thing in the market anyway. So maybe it's just a resolution thing that the devs are gonna have to fix within the games. Uh, with driving games though, the the extra kind of width, it made it actually quite enjoyable and it does give you a lot better field of vision. Um, now that could be something that could be tweaked to your, um, uh, your advantage with a lot of FPS games though, if you can actually see extra. But with HDR, one of the things I would say is HDR is something that I would only particularly be turning on for um, a single player mode. I don't think it's something that a lot of you are going to want to do when you're online or playing competitively because uh, your, um, your opponents could end up using the fact that you have extra shadows and all that sort of thing to their advantage as well. So it can work in two ways. So maybe that's something that you all need to think about at home as well is that single player, yeah, great. Do you know what I mean? You get all these extra colors and shadows and all the extra details. Uh, but somebody out there that's just their monitor is not that great and is that little bit bright and stuff They might actually see you in the shadows where you haven't seen them So that's maybe something to consider as well, but HDR is going to be something for kind of cinema files and You know the sort of people that just want their games to look the absolute nuts and the difference between SDR and HDR once you've actually seen it and it's implemented properly not like Forza um, it does look unreal so there the the, the value that, that comes from I mean yes this is an expensive screen and you know you're just going to have to kind of think about it as like two screens but I've seen the HDR FreeSync 2 HDR panels screens coming in from around 500 pounds and that was for a 27 inch 1440p, um, 144 hertz as well. This, which this is, which when you consider the size of it, it's quite a big deal. Uh, so you, and it was another VA panel as well. So if you kind of consider that being 500 and then this is a thousand and then the size, it's, it's gonna be up to you. I would have, I would say that this is so big though. It's only really gonna be something that th those of you out there, maybe you've got a big corner desk that you can kind of put it into because this is a 1.5 meter desk and it completely consumes it. And we've had to put this system down on the floor that we're running it with, um, which as I've said, it's got a rally on seven in it. Uh, but obviously for a normal 27 inch single monitor kind of uh, gaming setup, 500 pound with the FreeSync and the HDR as an entry level with those kind of specs is actually kind of, it's a decent price really when you think about it. VA panel, 144 hertz, FreeSync. There's a lot in there for your 500 pounds. Yes, you can get cheaper monitors, but I'm just you know trying to balance it out. And one of the things I would say is would I buy a HDR 400 panel? Well, it's gonna really depend again on your budget because to be able to make them HDR 600, or HDR 1000, the screens are gonna get a lot more expensive because of that local dimming that's required. Um, and it's really gonna depend whether you are playing enough games to take advantage of it. So it's really gonna come down to that point. You know, do you want to wait and hope that your games are gonna support it? Or are you just gonna go, ah, oh, I'm just gonna, HDR 400 will be enough. I've at least got that there. And then I suppose if you really get into it, you can obviously sell one and then get another one. But most of the big brands out there, Samsung, Asus behind me, I've seen AOC have got uh, screens out there for it now, and I only had a quick scan through uh, Amazon to see what sort of prices and what monitors were about. And there are a good few of them out there now, and it's relatively, with FreeSync 2, it's a relatively new thing, but you are gonna get more of them. I know you are gonna say about Nvidia support, 
but with the NVIDIA support for FreeSync, that seems to have been on the older monitors. Whereas this is a very new monitor, uh, and it's quite a new thing that they're rolling out as well. So it might take NVIDIA a little while, like a few months to catch up. So th those of you out there that are on the green team that are looking to maybe jump on, I'd probably stick with some of the bigger brands that are more likely to push through the G-Sync specification or certification, I should say, and see where it goes from there. But I've certainly not seen anything on that specifically yet. Anyway, this has been the tiniest of Logans, trying to explain and talk through my limited time that I've been allowed with HDR, because sadly the monitor does have to get boxed up today and it has to go back. But I have really enjoyed it. And would I have it for myself? I'd certainly not change the setup that I've got at this exact moment in time, because I've got quite a few monitors. But if it was something that I was building a rig for a friend or uh, maybe building a brand new gaming rig for myself and I was starting from scratch, it would definitely be on my consideration list when I was looking at uh, panels. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, it definitely adds an, another entire level of depth and clarity there. But I think it would all come down to budget in the end of the day. And are you or am I um, uh, going for absolute like blistering like unbelievable picture quality or do I just want to sit and play games and it's really going to come down to personal preference um, I really really enjoyed the darks and stuff but it's going to come down to now can we get more panels or more monitors out there to bring a broader spectrum so that you can actually start weighing them up and kind of putting them against each other rather than just spec list bashing and it, it's, it would be unfair for me to look at one panel and then go, yeah, it's the best thing since sliced bread. But it's definitely something that I'm looking forward to seeing evolve in the coming months. And it's really going to come down to how many more monitors come out. But most importantly, how many more games can get some proper, decent like implementation like Assassin's Creed. Because that is literally, if, the, if all of the developers can put that much effort in, there's going to be some serious legs with this. Thank <laughs> you.